there friends! Today we're diving into 10 things that totally amazed me when I moved here from the States. Ever seen dogs walking their owners? And those mini police boxes you see at almost every station. They're like something out of a spy movie. Plus, here's a fun fact. No tipping needed. We'll also talk about how housing and food are crazy affordable. But wait, there's more. Stick around to the end to find out a surprising mystery about my poop. <gasps> yeah, you heard that right. Okay, let's jump right in! I was first shocked to find out that I didn't need a car in Japan. In the States, unless you live in a big city like New York, having a car is a must. In Japan, however, a simple bicycle will do just fine and is so much cheaper. My neighbors here thought I would want a fast bike, like a 10 or 20 speed. No, I wanted the most common bike that is practical for going to work and shopping. And in Japan, it's called a mamachari, which means mother's bicycle. For shopping purposes, I got a second basket on the back so I could carry more groceries. This bike is perfect. It has six speeds and is very strong and costs about $270. Another popular bicycle in Japan is the family bike. It's an electric assisted bicycle and could carry at least two children with an adult and the cost starts at about $850. Still cheaper than a car in the States. Buying a bike is one thing, riding it is a whole different story here. As many of you may know, Japan's traffic is opposite that of the states. So obviously, you must ride your bicycle in that same pattern. Well, it's not as easy as it seems. My instinct tells me to stay to the right. When passing another bicyclist on the sidewalk, you must pass on the left. Otherwise, you both will crash. I had to keep saying to myself after arriving in Japan, left, left, left. Another huge surprise for me was the cost of living in Japan. It is so cheap! A two-bedroom apartment from 753 square feet costs, on average, $420 a month in my area. And I'm not living in the countryside. I'm only 30 minutes from Tokyo by train. It is crazy cheap. In the States, I would have to pay at least $1,500 for the same apartment. And my average utility bill, including electricity, gas, and water, is about $80 a month. Wow! Okay, so no car expense, and housing and utilities are so cheap. Well, what about food? If you've watched my other video, Culture Shock, you know I stick to a pretty simple breakfast. I eat a bag of komatsuna, which is kind of like a mix of kale and spinach, and it only costs about 65 cents a bag. For lunch and dinner, I usually spend around $3.25 a meal. So altogether, it's about $8 a day. But here's the fun part. At night, many stores discount their lunch boxes and prepared foods by half. So sometimes it's even even cheaper than $8 a day. Now I'm on a mission to see how low I can keep my monthly food costs while living here. I'll share all the details in a future video, so stay tuned! One day, my neighbor got sick and went to the hospital. When she came back, I gave her flowers to welcome her home. And she surprised me a day later with a nicely wrapped dessert from the local store. I was really amazed. And after some research online, I found that this is a custom in Japan called okaishi, where people give a return gift to show appreciation. But then I started wondering, is there a return gift for a return gift thing? I mean... That could keep going on forever, right? Luckily, it seems like it stops at the first return gift. And here are some important tips I learned about giving gifts in Japan. One, always wrap them nicely and put them in a bag, even if it's something simple like carrots. Japan has a thing for bags. Two, make sure the return gift isn't more expensive than the original one. Three, when receiving a gift, take it with both hands and ask if you can open it before doing so. And number four, open it gently, carefully peeling back the tape, almost like you were going to use the wrapping paper again. One thing that really surprised me about Japan is how much they care about giving great customer service. When I walked into a McDonald's here, the first thing I heard was, "Irashaimase," which means, welcome to our restaurant. The lady at the counter had a big smile and even tried speaking some English to help me. The restaurant was really clean and the staff making the burgers in the back were working hard and looked neat. It's not just fast food either. Even regular family restaurants carry that same friendly attitude. And guess what? In Japan, you don't leave a tip. In fact, if you leave money on the 
table, they will come running after you to give it back. I love it. Great customer service is everywhere in Japan. I went to a department store right before it opened at 10 a.m. and was shocked to see all the uniform staff standing neatly in front of their stores, waiting for the opening bell. When the doors opened at exactly 10 a.m., they all said, Irashaimase, welcome to our store, and bowed to each customer. I felt like I was getting VIP treatment. And get this, even contractors come exactly when they say they will, sometimes even a bit early. I had a plumber coming to fix my sink at 2 p.m the other day and he arrived at 1.50. He took off his shoes at the entrance, put down a plastic mat to put his tools on, and then got to work. After he finished, he cleaned up everything, even bringing his own vacuum to tidy up. He said it might take two hours, but finished in less than one. In Japan, it seems like workers promise less, but deliver more. I wanted to tip the plumber, but remembered you don't do that in Japan. I asked what I could do to help his business, and he said to leave a review, if possible, on his website. So now, instead of tipping, I leave reviews views online. Now let's talk about personal space. You know, that invisible bubble around us that makes us feel comfortable or not. Well, in Japan, I noticed that people keep even more space between each other than in America. Most people don't even shake hands when they meet. They bow instead. Can you imagine giving hugs? No, definitely out of the question. You also don't see many people kissing in public or holding hands. Actually, I see more high school girls holding hands than couples. Now. I'm not much of a hugger, but I had to get used to not shaking hands when meeting someone. I just do a little bow instead. Taking out the trash was another adventure here in Japan. There are some very strict rules made by the government, and everyone follows them. Here's how it goes in my neighborhood. On Monday, it's all about cardboard and any paper stuff, like newspapers or comic books. Tuesday is a relaxed day, with no trash pickup. Wednesday is burnable trash day, but you must buy a special bag from the store to put your trash in. Otherwise, they won't pick it up. Thursday is for cans, glass, and plastic bottles. Friday, we handle non-burnable and hazardous trash. Saturday is for regular burnable trash again, with those special bags. And Sunday is another day off for trash. They also come on every holiday except New Year's. And what's really amazing is, the trash collection areas are always kept very clean. Comparing New York City and Tokyo is like night and day. Here's what I've noticed. In Japan, kids at elementary schools, like my neighbors, help clean their classrooms, stairwells, and bathrooms every single day. That's awesome because they learn from an early age to keep their spaces clean. At a baseball game in Chiba Marine Stadium, I was amazed to see people carrying their trash out with them. Back in Yankee Stadium, it's pretty common for folks to just toss their trash on the ground. One thing that blew my mind was how safe it is here. Police officers even patrol on bicycles and scooters. I got stopped by two officers on scooters the other day while riding my bike. They wanted to check if my bike was registered to me. In New York, Cops are too busy dealing with serious crimes, like shootings, to do stuff like that. In Japan, hardly anyone has guns. Only nine gun-related incidents happened in the whole country in 2023. And most of those were linked to crime groups. In New York City, you probably hear about that many gun incidents in just one day. Have you heard of Kobans? There are small police stations near train stations in Japan. The police officers there are very helpful and cheerful. If you're lost or need directions, they're the ones to ask. Plus, they even handle lost and found items for the neighborhood. Speaking about lost and found, I left my wallet at the local grocery store the other day. When I rushed back, the staff directed me to the customer service desk on the third floor. They checked my details and handed me back my wallet with all my cash and cards still inside. And guess what? It's not just me. Lots of people here have similar stories of honesty and kindness. It's good to be a dog in Japan. Dogs are spoiled here. I mean spoiled with a capital S. I have never seen so many dog strollers in my life. And if they don't have a dog stroller, many people carry their dogs as they walk. So who is taking whom for a walk? Of course, everyone cleans up after their dog here. They even carry around plastic bottles with some kind of cleaner to squirt on the dog's urine after it pees. Wow, that's impressive. Okay, one last observation before wrapping up. And this is only between me and you, all right? Since I moved to Japan, something strange happened. My poop doesn't smell. I'm not kidding. Back in the States, the bathroom oh. smelled like the Staten Island dump. But here in Japan, it's like magic. No smell at all. And guess what? 
I hardly ever fart now. It's crazy, isn't it? It makes me wonder what they put in the food in the States. So there you have it. My top 10 things that surprised me after moving to Japan. If you want to discover more interesting stuff, don't forget to watch my video, Culture Shock, linked in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, and remember to subscribe, like, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. I'll see you in the next one. Sayonara!